Occupational English test. Practice test. Listening test. This test has three parts. In each part, you'll hear a number of different extracts. At the start of each extract, you'll hear this sound. You'll have time to read the questions before you hear each extract, and you'll hear each extract once only. Complete your answers as you listen. At the end of the test, you'll have two minutes to check your answers. Part A. In this part of the test, you'll hear two different extracts. In each extract, a health professional is talking to a patient. For questions 1 to 24, complete the notes with information you hear. Now look at the notes for extract 1. Extract 1, questions 1 to 12. For questions 1 to 12, complete the notes with a word or short phrase. You now have 30 seconds to look at the notes. It's good to see you again. Good to see you. And we have already we have already gone through your history and physical. We decided that you are a good candidate for doing the uh, bilateral fixation, yes. SI joint fixation. That yes. should help you a great deal. That you don't need the fusion, and that we don't need to do a piriformis release. So I think we're ready then to go ahead and proceed with that if you're ready. Okay. Well, I have done a little bit of studying upon mm -hmm. this, and uh, I've got some questions. I wrote some questions down, um, and I would like you to. If you could explain the surgery to me, exactly what I will be going through and what you'll be doing to me. Sure. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is you're going the morning of the surgery. You're going to go to the preoperative area, mm -hmm. and in the preoperative area, Vicky comes in the morning of the surgery as well as I do too, of course. But she is going to manipulate you and make sure that you feel good and that you're in in alignment, in good alignment. Then you're going to be taken to the surgery suite itself and you'll be on the gurney uh, in the surgery suite, and we will put you to sleep there. Mm -hmm. um, you also get IV antibiotics at that time, and at that time they'll set you up for the neuromuscular monitoring. They'll put little needles, and they are little, okay. and of course near sleep also anyway, but they'll put small <laughs> needles in all the, all the muscles so that during the surgery we can monitor that to make sure we're not near a nerve root. Uh, and then after that we will roll you into a prone position. The surgery is done with you on your stomach, so you'll be on chest rolls. Then we're ready. And then we'll go ahead and prep the, uh, uh, your back and, uh, uh, and proceed with surgery. Now you're having a fixation only and what we will end up doing is putting two screws on each side. And the way that I determine where to put the screw in is first with an 18 gauge needle and then under the C-arm. I didn't mention earlier, of course, we have you on the position so that we can use uh, C-arm, which is for x-rays, a fluoroscopy, okay. so that we can look through and see the bones. We'll stimulate the, the uh, pin and then we'll see if we get a response from the muscles. And if we do not get a response, we stimulate up to 20 milliamp level. If we do not get a response uh, at about 50 milliamp level, we're, we're usually very happy with that, even if we get a little response later on. But that makes sure that we're not close to the nerve roots, which are down here. Now, after we have the pin and the pin, we're happy with that, with the positioning on x-ray, as well as with uh, the lack of response on the stimulation, then we'll get a screw, a titanium cannulated screw, and put that over that guide pin, and then literally put it into the bone, screw it into the bone okay. and compress it. So, and then after we have the screw in, and usually I'll use 35 millimeter length screws most of the time. Um, after we have the screw in, we'll test it again by stimulation to see mm -hmm. if there's response from the muscles. And again, if there isn't, um, then we're happy with that. And then that's the finish, the first Do you one. ever have to um, reposition a pin or we move do. a pin Sometimes out? Sometimes if, if we get, start getting responses about 20, 10 milliamps or, or below that, we're certainly going to reposition okay. it. So we're happy with the first one. 
and then we put in a second one, which is essentially parallel, usually a little bit higher, uh, pretty much parallel to the first one. And that's actually the end of the procedure. Well, now, hmm. after this, how long am I going to be in the, um, in the hospital? You'll be in the hospital if, uh, if you're local, we'll keep you overnight. Okay. Okay. Now, what about my short-term restrictions right, right after surgery? Uh, in the immediate period after the surgery now, we are going to limit your activity. We do want you to be active. We do want you to walk. Okay. But we want you to limit the prolonged standing or limit the prolonged walking to about 30 minutes. Can you go up the, and then all or like once a day? Or? You can. Okay. You can. You, you, you really will let you do what you really need to do. Okay. But just kind of be careful in doing it. Okay. The other thing we want you to not do is do any repetitive bending over, uh, repetitive extending, okay. which is really similar to most back problems. Now, what about my long-term restrictions? Mm -hmm. Long term, as we talked about before, no bungee jumping. I you know, promise like not to. <laughs> okay, and then, but but more more significantly, even you don't want to do things that are going to be jarring to the back. Um, specifically, um, even stair climbing or the stair not stair climbing, but the stair master type of uh, okay. aerobic exercises. Um, it would not do that. I think swimming would be much better. What about yoga? Because I've done yoga for years. Um, yoga, if you avoid the extremes of it, mm -hmm. um, you can do the yoga. I, I don't yoga do the extremes of it. My body won't do the extremes of it. Um, mm -hmm. What about, I was curious about the screws. Do they ever work their way out? No, they don't. Um, there is a possibility they could possibly become loose, but really we've not had that problem either. The, the screws are made of titanium, and the titanium really attracts the bone to grow right up to it, much more so than stainless steel. Um, so they're, they're not going to work their way out on their own. Now, is there a difference between a fixation and a fusion? There is a difference. You're just going to have the fixation. Okay. And That's, good. That's so, good to know. So these are really two different things. That is, now, the other thing, when you fix the joint, which it's not moving anymore, um, do, do I lose any motion or is my body going to be able to tell that? Of course, the whole idea of this of this whole procedure is to limit uh, micro, what I call micromotion, mm -hmm. which in this case you always are supposed to have a little micromotion in that joint. But if you have excessive motion, it leads to the problems like the, like, like you have. So we are limiting that motion. We are twisting. So it's I can not continue on what uh, afterwards. You can continue to actually do a lot better because it's not going to hurt. Exactly. That is true. That's true. Now, speaking of pain, mm -hmm. what about? post-op pain, how much pain is involved with this? You are going to have some discomfort, especially in the immediate post-op, but it is a different, it's a post-operative pain. It's not the same pain as what you had beforehand. Okay. And usually it is not that severe that you cannot get up on the morning or on the afternoon after the surgery. Mm -hmm. We usually do these surgeries first thing in the morning so that, um, and then by the afternoon, usually we try to get you up with physical therapy. And most everyone re responds that uh, most of their preoperative pain is gone, if not all of it. But they still have some of the postoperative pain, but it's much more tolerable for them okay. than the preoperative pain was. And, of course, that's going to lessen. Even by the next morning, that's markedly lessened. I am ready to have this surgery. You've answered my questions, and I think let's just go for it because I am very ready. That sounds good. Extract 2, questions 13 to 24. For questions 13 to 24, complete the notes with a word or short phrase. You now have 30 seconds to look at the notes. Good morning, I suppose you're George? Yes, yes, and I believe you're Dr. Mark. Oh, yes, I am. What brings you here today? Well, um, I'm having this redness in my, um, in, in the white part of my eye, actually. All right. I think, um, uh, I don't know what it's called, is it called the conjunctiva or something? Mm -hmm. It's quite swollen, and, you know. I can um, see that, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I've been having more tears than usual, like, you know, it's, um, 
more than tears, I, I think it's, um, you know, sometimes I can feel that it's sort of like a yellow kind of discharge. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And like, uh, you know, it, 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 I mean, it crusts over the eyelashes, you know, and, you know, w w when I go to sleep, it's not, not, during the daytime, it's not really bad, but when I go to sleep and I wake up, you can, you can see that, like, you know, it's quite thick. Do you have any particular sensations there? Uh, it's quite itchy, you know, like, you know, and I feel um, sometimes burning, mm -hmm. um, like, in the eyes, and, uh, and I'm not sure it's because of these discharges or whether anything else is happening. I feel like my vision is quite blurred. Um, right. So, um, and, I mean, I think, I believe the sensitivity to the light has changed as well. Um, like, it's, um, how do I, how do I... Uh, call it like um, stubby. Stubby. Yeah. And uh, I just like you know don't have anything else. Just these these things, and you know, um, I have um, other allergies and everything, but I don't know whether it is associated with it. All right. Allergies, you said. Yeah, yeah. I'm allergic to pollen. Um, um, so That's dust. Uh, um, like. Not very much. It's hard to, I mean, pollen is, you know, it's tested and, you know, I am positively allergic to pollen. Okay. And, you know, sometimes I get common cold and like, you know, it's mm -hmm. not, not like, you know, not a lot. Um, you know, so I would, I would love you to do, um, like probably an eye examination mm -hmm. and, you know, we could just, do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there is a thorough history collection in the laboratory. Yeah. No, so I, so I believe I'm gonna have to give some blood or something like that. No, you don't have to. Yeah. You could rest assured. Yeah. Well, we still keep the eyes clean, please. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I'm I'm pretty like you know I've I've had it when I was a child and you know I remember you know I wash my um you know wash wash the eyes with clean water um and I change the pillowcases every day um like in you know, the morning. And you know, I'm like, and I think, you know, I have to do until the infection goes away. But you know, it's not my expertise; it's more of your expertise. So, I mean, I do the basic do's and don'ts, and like, you know, I, I you know, I, you know, I don't touch both eyes, or like, you know, with, with, with the same same finger, or like, you know, I don't rub. Right. Um, you know, I just don't like, and I don't want to spread it to the other eye as well. So, and hopefully, like last time when it happened. Um, you know, they, the doctor gave me some eye drops and, you know, um, like it's just, it's, it's just the regular things, I believe, but I, I feel like I'm a bit of a fraud coming in just for a bit. It might be something silly, but, you know. Um, you did yeah. the right thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I would ask you not to put a patch over the eye. Yeah. It might worsen the infection. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. And uh, protect the eyes from dirt. Yeah, yeah. Especially from the irritants you mentioned. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, did I forget to ask you to take enough rest? Well, um, well, I've not been doing much. Um, you know, I, um, I mean, well, I started off using, uh, like, you know, when it went, like, on the first day, you know, when it happened, I thought, like, oh, I just, you know, look at it, and I don't want this to go bad or something. So I used an, I used an over-the-counter eye drop. Um, I tried it to start with. Um, and you know now um, my like my vision is a bit blurry, so I, I'm not you know watching TV or anything. I'm just giving get a bit of rest. And, uh, I'd also ask you to stay away from work for a few days if it's okay. Oh, well, that's um, no, that's that's not really a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> if you're happy to give me a give me a sick certificate, um, I mean I've, I'm physically feeling really good actually, but it's just I don't think it's safe as well. Uh, you know, I work. Um, uh, like you know, in a, in a chemist as well. I mean, I'm not a pharmacist, but actually, I just you know, uh, just read scripts and stuff, things and assist a pharmacist. So I don't think it's safe enough with this condition. I should work. So, I'm like, and, so that I'll prescribe you some antihistamines as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think I think that would be good. I'll probably take some rest and you know take the medications. And uh, uh, do you want me to see me next week, or just you want to know how it goes, or like? How about in four days, Jack? Okay, cool. So I'll try it, and uh, you can, if I can work it out, I'll do it. Great. Thanks. Thank nice you. meeting you, Doc.
That is the end of part A. Extract 1, questions 1 to 12. For questions 1 to 12, complete the notes with a word or short phrase. You now have 30 seconds to look at the notes. Hello Elizabeth, I'm Richard. I'm one of the nurses in this district, nursing. And uh, the doctor has asked me to see you, so I guess you know that. Yes, I do. All right, yeah. So please, please take a seat. Thank you. Right, yeah. So, okay, how can I help you? Um, well, nurse, it's kind of bit complicated. Mm -hmm. um, I've got this problem with my back. All right. And it hurts very bad. All right, yeah. I, I've seen your case notes, and yes, I've seen that, yes. So, um, can you explain the situation you go through currently? Yes, yes, sure. Uh, well, uh, I experienced this discomfort and a very stiff feeling in my back. Mm. It's been long. All right. And uh, I used to use some pain relief ointment to relieve the symptoms, but obviously... Oh. Um, it's not working. working. All right, yeah. So, um, can you tell me when this started? It was uh, one and a half year ago mm -hmm. when the pain started. All I right. was prescribed with some painkillers back then. All right, yes. And uh, after 12 months, mm -hmm. uh, there was no relief in the pain. All right, so you have been uh, taking the medicines yes. consistently. All right, yes, yeah, okay. I did. Well, I could not stand up. Due oh, to this okay. Right. For which I was later hospitalized for, say, two days. Okay. And I underwent some uh, blood tests along with the beta meal. Oh, yeah. Water. All right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm. So, so later, after six months, I was diagnosed with a tumor in my back. Oh, all right. Okay. Uh, yeah. For which I underwent a surgery mm -hmm. and a small part of my bone that was removed. Okay. Uh, that's what was told to me and I was also told um, the tumor was spread to my liver oh, and right. my lower back and now that was very sad and I was I was worried right. about it. Right so you you said you were in terrible pain were, were you given some medicine for that? Yes I was um, pethidine three times per day mm -hmm. and uh, some alternative modalities for pain relief. I tried acupuncture for say two months, which I discontinued later. Oh, so you felt that was not working? Yeah, it was not. Did you do something else for the pain? Yes, I did and I am still doing it. I smoke uh, marijuana. Marijuana? Yeah, dope. Okay, so uh, that's not the ideal thing you should be doing. I understand, but... Mm, right, yeah. yes. So uh, what are your thoughts about what you are going through? That's the main reason I've come to you. you know, right, um, yeah. I've been depressed for quite a long time and I've been going through this rough phase and I feel anxious about my illness. Uh, you know, even I get these weird thoughts of ending my life. I considered suicide. I'm sorry to hear that. Yes, yes. yeah. But um, I just want to get this over. Right, yes. I need help. Uh, yeah, but Elizabeth, uh, you know, that's not the way out actually I know see I w wanted to see you because you know uh, there are a couple of things that the doctor wanted me to discuss with you okay and uh, I would be arranging some counseling sessions for you that would be great yes uh, so um, if that's fine with you I can get that rolling in a few days time yes of course and uh, that's actually part of an ongoing um, modalities that the doctor wants for you. Okay. Right. And uh, I can also try, you know, some alternative modalities of pain relief. 
Okay. All right, and that would uh, include uh, many things, mm -hmm. including acupuncture, acupressure, mm -hmm. and uh, yoga. Uh, I haven't tried it yet. Right. Is, will it be? Uh, yes, it, it has helped many people who okay. have, you know, gone through um, things similar to what you go through. All right. So those things should be helpful, and uh, that is, they don't have any side effects actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, you should be seeing a specialist as well, okay. that's okay with you? That would be fine. Who would particularly help you through this phase of your life and help you to come out of what you are going through. Yeah. Extract 2. Questions 13 to 24. For questions 13 to 24, complete the notes with a word or short phrase. You now have 30 seconds to look at the notes. So, Mr. Alexander, the physical exam's very consistent with some very bad back spasming, causing the pain you're in today. Well, I am in a lot of pain. I've been in a lot of pain for a little over a week now. Yeah. Uh, that's why I went to the emergency yeah. ward, because it just was unbearable. So, yeah. And I'm not sleeping well, neither, from this. Yeah, it's ex you're exhausted. I am, pain. Yeah. extremely. Well, this back pain, we can treat with some uh, medication for the pain, some, uh, something for the back spasm as well, uh, exercises, and uh, a heating pad to make you feel better. Uh, most of the time, back pain will get better uh, with this conservative treatment. Well, that sounds nice, doctor. I mean, it sounds okay, but what I was thinking is that maybe I should have an MRI done because uh, I think maybe something seriously is going on with my back, so. Tell me about that. Well, I'm concerned that something is uh, seriously wrong, like I may have a pinched nerve or a um, slip disc or something, and I figured an MRI could at least show if that's what's going on or roll it out, and, you know, it'd be sort of like a peace of mind thing for me as well, so. Yeah, yes. Uh, I could see you're worried about it, and I, I would be too, but I have to tell you, uh, the physical exam today shows nothing more than the back spasm. It has none of these red flags we worry about, um, such as the weakness in the leg, uh, problems with the reflexes, or anything with this neurologic exam. It all came back normal today. Um, you had no fever in the history and no uh, problems that, uh, besides the pain that you're having from the lifting that you described. I know you're in a lot of pain um, and you're worried about it, uh, but most of my patients get better with this conservative treatment. Is there something else you're worried about? Uh, well, like I said, you know, it's been a problem for over a week now and I'm really concerned that something is wrong and that I'll never be able to work again or I'll be disabled yeah. for the rest of my life. Yeah. I mean, doctor, look, I, I did some research on my, you know, on my own. I, I went uh -huh. on the internet. I was reading up about, you know, what people do for their back pains and, and I saw this guy, actually I saw a couple people uh, who swear that after an MRI their back feels a lot better. Something to... Uh, to do with the magnetisms, I believe it's in the machines or something, okay. and I hear people using magnets to, you know, to help with back issues and other pains. Okay. So I'm thinking, well, you know, I can find out if something seriously is going on with the MRI, and at the same time maybe feel better because of the magnets that are, you know, going on in the machine. So that's why I'm asking you to uh, give me a referral so I can get an MRI done. Yeah. I know you want to get better, I, I feel that from you, uh, but the yeah. MRI has not been shown in the past to help alone, the magnetism. Uh, that's not something that it actually does. It's an imaging study, it just shows what's there. Um, you mentioned you wanted an MRI while we were doing the uh, physical, so I pulled out some uh, information for you about it. Because right. uh, the MRI um, can cause some harm. 
and uh, we don't want to do that. It's unnecessary uh, when you have this type of spasming pain. Um, a study shows that with people who get uh, MRIs within the first month of having back pain are eight times more likely to have surgery. And I don't think you're a candidate or we want you to have surgery at this point. No, I, I don't want surgery at this point. I don't want surgery at any point. Right. I just want my back to get better. And so I figured, you know, this MRI could, yeah. you know, show me if, you know, anything's going on and maybe the magnets would help. But you're saying that that's pretty much no. a myth. No, it's, I see back pain a lot. Most of my patients get better within four to six weeks with this conservative treatment we mentioned with the medication and exercises and heat. What do you feel about that? Well, it doesn't look like you're going to give me an MRI referral, so um, I mean, I'll try it, mm -hmm. but if yeah. it doesn't work or if I have other symptoms going on, could we consider an MRI then? Absolutely. I mean, uh, I want you to get better, sure. and I really think this is going to help you get better, and you will get better. Uh, and if not, I want you to call me, and I want to see you again in a few weeks to make sure you're getting better. That is the end of part A.